things were a lot simpler back in those days. Oh, sure, it took skill to fly a machine that cruised at 80 and stalled at 50. It took fast reflexes and heads-up piloting. It took a good eye and practice to drop a bomb by hand and have it hit the target. Those basic things, they haven't changed. It still takes skill and practice, as in the early days, only a lot more so. Every fighter pilot knows that's true, and that includes me. I'm Wally Shira. I've been there, too. These days, they do it with missiles. We found out in Vietnam that young pilots were firing out of the envelope, because there was no way to give them enough realistic missile training before they went into combat. Today, we'd like to give each pilot all the ordinance it takes to maintain a fighting edge. The need for readiness would seem to demand it. Budget limitations make it impossible. The answer to that need came in 1973 with Cubic Corporation's Air Combat Maneuvering Range, ACMR, for the Naval Air Systems Command of the U.S. Navy. Later came a modified version, the Air Combat Maneuvering Instrumentation, for the U.S. Air Force. For convenience, we use a combined label, ACMRI. Today, the system has been upgraded with some impressive new functions, as I'll show you in a bit. The glory of this electronic aid to training lies in its realism. The pilot flies the mission just as he would fly a real mission. When it comes time to fire his missile, he goes through every step just as he would with a real missile. Each aircraft symbol carries a number alongside and a ground shadow that X's on the screen below the aircraft. There's never any argument about whether it's a kill or not. The display shows the missile in flight. And then the computer instantly gives the results. In case of a miss, it also gives the reason. I wish we had had ACMRI in my days as a fighter pilot. It provides the kind of realistic training that was never possible before. It's realism, plus enormous cost savings. With seven systems already in place, ACMRI has proven many times over that an installation can pay for itself in a single year through reduced costs of training, fuel, aircraft, and weapons, as well as accidents avoided. After a miss, the instructor can immediately tell the pilot why he missed, then set him up for another try. Five or ten simulated shots in one session is common and impossible any other way. What's more, ACMRI gives a level of safety that goes far beyond the ordinary. The instructor has decided in advance on safety limits for each aircraft, speed, altitude, angle of attack, maximum Gs. Throughout the exercise, these and other data on each aircraft are displayed in bar graph form for quick scanning. Any safety parameter that succeeded causes an alert. Simultaneously, the details appear on the other screen so that the instructor can immediately advise the pilot. That represents a kind of safety that's impossible to get with an instructor who's watching from the rear seat of one aircraft. The ACMRI is made up of four major subsystems. The Airborne Instrumentation Subsystem, AIS, is the only one to leave the ground. The AIS gathers data on aircraft flight dynamics, as well as pertinent weapon system information, and transmits it to Earth. Housed in a low drag pod, it fits onto any sidewinder pylon. Data from the AIS is received by the tracking instrumentation subsystem, TIS. These are the ground stations, one master and six or more remote sites throughout the range area. The remotes can be solar powered, and they don't need an operator. To provide flexibility, the ground stations can be movable, so you can reconfigure the range at will. Well, the entire system could be transported to set up the range at a completely new location.
But suppose your airbase doesn't happen to have a handy desert nearby, available for use as a range. Now you can locate your range offshore by means of these anchored but movable buoys or towers with electrical power supplied by solar energy. Putting the range over water offers environmental advantages because it avoids aircraft flying low or supersonic over people, livestock, or farms. It also allows training for war at sea. Data received by the ground stations is relayed to the control and computation subsystem, the computing heart of the ACMRI. The data is then fed on to the display and debriefing subsystem. All the computers and displays are normally housed in vans for convenience and mobility, but can be in buildings. The system tracks up to eight aircraft simultaneously in air combat maneuvering, a dogfight, and up to 12 additional low activity aircraft. In future systems, these numbers will double at least. The angle shapes represent the mountain ranges in the area. What the displays show and what the instructor can do with them is really extraordinary. The aircraft symbols are small images of the actual type aircraft portrayed. When the aircraft turns or rolls, you can actually see it happen. The instructor can view the scene from whatever angle gives him the best look, up high or down near the ground, and from any angle. He can rotate the picture as he desires. He can get in the cockpit of the aircraft to see the action from the pilot's point of view. During an exercise, the system offers unmatched realism and effectiveness of training, unparalleled cost savings, and an impressive level of safety. After the exercise, the system's replay feature offers perhaps the most valuable learning of any pilot training system, a controlled rerun of the complete mission. There are no excuses, no arguing. No, I don't think that's what happened. The instructor can show the action from any angle, from any aircraft, because the system has recorded all the data from the entire mission. You analyze the formation correctly as a trail formation. Your game plan was to attack that trail man in the formation, which is an excellent game plan. Uh, as we get into the fight, the bogeys did a late jink, and the formation actually changed. As you locked the uh, trail bogey and got to this point uh, in the fight, the formation has changed now very significantly without you noticing uh, or being capable of noticing that. As we come to the point here, where as you're coming around the corner, going for that trail man, establishing your lateral separation to uh, start the uh, conversion, Number three, down here, is going to be using the lateral separation to actually convert to you. Your Fox 1's in the air here. It looks like it should be a real good Fox 1. You are keeping the uh, antenna illuminating the target, which is absolutely necessary. Now's the time for GCI, if you have it, to give you a good uh, threat sector to the south. You didn't have GCI here. You're seeing the, tar the missile impact the target. That's the time to go back to your mental plot and start coming port because you know the bogey is somewhere out there on that port side. Turns out you have a little bit delayed reaction coming down to the left and bogey number three here has converted and actually taken a shot here. Let's take a look at his shot criteria. Here are your shot parameters for your uh, first Fox 1, aircraft 1 to 2, the first column up here. You can see the range is about 7 and 3 quarters mile or so, good, uh, good range. V sub C, a little over 1100 knots. Antenna train angle about 27 degrees. Uh, good parameters. Uh, altitude, uh, are the big uh, criteria there, about 4,000 feet of difference, 24 versus 20. At that altitude and that range, uh, no problems in there. So that's a good Fox 1. The air combat maneuvering range and instrumentation. It adds up to the safest, most cost-effective way of keeping pilots at the sharpest edge of combat-ready skills. And now a powerful series of new expanded capabilities is being offered. No drop bombing, air to ground missiles, mine laying, electronic warfare, and operational test and evaluation. Bombing practice. The biggest challenge has always been how do you train a pilot to find the hard to identify types of targets and fly against them 
this effectively. The ACMRI no drop bombing has brought the answer. It provides a realistic combat training scenario using actual targets. And the targets do not get destroyed in repeated use. With ACMRI, the instructor can do a great deal more than just keep score of bombing accuracy. He can evaluate the pilot's ability to acquire the target, position himself, and coordinate with other strike elements. And his technique, how steady is he during the run? The blinking symbols of the aircraft and the tank alert the instructor that the aircraft is below safe altitude. For scoring, the system accurately depicts where the bomb would have hit. This training provides the closest thing possible to combat realism. The present system is capable of handling up to eight aircraft, double that or more in future systems. Each can make single or multiple bomb drops. Accuracy averages 30 feet or three to five mil CEP, which is within the dispersion pattern of most bombs. Coordinated strike training can also be accomplished. No drop bombing, a major advance in training capabilities. Air to ground missile launch, another problem in realistic training, now solved with ACMRI. When the real weapons are too costly to expend every day, here's the answer. Again, the pilots brief and fly the mission exactly as they would for a live missile firing. With an anti-radiation missile, the instructor gets a display of the missile footprint moment by moment. And he can see any deficiencies in the pilot's poor sighting. Meanwhile, every parameter of aircraft performance is being displayed for the instructor and recorded for debriefing. When the pilot shoots his missile, the footprint freezes. The pilot can get a detailed evaluation from the instructor while going around for another shot. With ACMRI, a pilot can make 10 or more realistic missile runs in a single flight, limited only by his available fuel. For training pilots at mine laying, the system brings the same powerful capabilities to bear. The instructor sees on his display exactly where each mine is supposed to be placed and how close the pilot comes. Of course, all these advanced system capabilities also make use of the large screen display, repeating any part of the action over and over as necessary. Like an instant replay on TV, the instructor can let the pilot relive exactly what he did and what he did wrong, a most powerful training tool. For training pilots in the electronic warfare role, ACMRI offers a function that would be difficult as well as costly to duplicate. On command, the computer will produce the desired number of simultaneous enemy radar emissions, each one coming from any selected point on the range. As the pilot encounters each one on his normal cockpit displays, he evaluates the threat and takes appropriate action. And of course, the instructor's at the console monitoring every step. In the same way, ACMRI can help train your pilots over the full spectrum of tactical missions against a wide variety of threats. Another invaluable role of ACMRI is in operational test and evaluation, OT&E. This was demonstrated during ACEVAL, AIMVAL at Nellis Air Force Base, as well as during the F-16 multinational test and evaluation. The system offers a capability of immense value in this role. By conducting the test on the ACMRI range, all the performance parameters can be recorded for later evaluation. The engineer or officer in charge of the test can even vary his test plan during the flight. It's even better than observing the test from the rear seat. Today, ACMRI is operational at locations in the U.S. and Europe, with full ranges at 
MCAS Yuma, Nellis Air Force Base, NAS Oceana, Tyndall Air Force Base, Sardinia, Italy, and in addition, there are also satellite installations at the Naval Air Station Miramar and three Air Force bases, Langley, Eglin, and Hill. With ACMRI, you can count on increased safety, enormous cost savings, and a level of combat readiness that spells confidence. A mature, proven system from Cubic Corporation. The next time out of the barn, you want pilots who will be ready to do what this pilot did in Vietnam. This is Wally Chirac. Thank you.